I know I probably say this a lot, but I'm super excited for today's video. I am sharing four easy Easter DIYs and I know y'all are going to love them as much as I do. And I'm so happy that you're watching my video today. And if we haven't met, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. I'm recreating this bead carrot thing that I've seen on multiple channels, but I'm giving a shout out today to the Crafty Quinn for my inspiration. And I just start out by putting the beads onto a skewer and I got the skewer from Dollar Tree. Then I'm painting them with a foam brush. Now I am using folk art paint in the color saffron and I did add some water to my sponge brush before putting it into the paint to thin it out, you know, the paint just a bit. Also, I am using a sponge brush from Dollar Tree because it has a pointy end and I feel like you can get in between each of the beads a lot better and just makes it easier in my opinion. Now I, they're dry, so I'm gonna lay them out and get them ready to string up and it's going from smallest to biggest. Now, I don't know why I thought this was a good idea, but I decided to string them all on the twine at the same time. This is not the best idea. I really do recommend that you do it separately, but I thought I was gonna make it easy peasy on myself and not have to thread as much, but yeah, it didn't work out that way. After you have threaded it all on, I round, wound that twine around my hands about 18 to 20 times, and I'm just trying to create a tassel at the end. And I need to rewatch my friend um, Ellie over at DIY From House to Home because she has a, a little tutorial on how to do a jute twine tassel, and I need to I need to learn better. So anyway, I, I get the tassel going and I push all the beads down to the bottom and I'm trying to string that jute twine piece that's left over back through the beads to kind of secure it a little more securely and end up having to put masking tape on the end to get it to thread through because the beads, well you think the hole would be like uniform but it's not, like the smaller beads have a smaller hole. and. I guess that would be obvious, but <laughs> I thought they would be more similar size. Anyway, so I'm just trying to thread that back through and I'm on the struggle bus with this one, y'all. It's not wanting to work like I want it to. And so um, once I get all the beads strung back down, I tie a knot at the end and then it does look like a little carrot. I think it turned out really cute. And I just basically repeat that process again winding it around my hands 18 to 20 times, creating a tassel, threading back the, through the top piece of twine through the carrots, <laughs> through the beads that are representing the carrot, and then tying a knot at the end. Y'all, these turned out so stinking cute. I just love them. Oh, I love anything miniature, you know, or like baby sized. So um, I think the carrots turned out really well and I just love them. DIY number two comes to you courtesy of Creative on the Cheap. She did this little spring sign and I thought it was adorable, so I'm recreating it. I'm using this canvas from the Dollar Tree and I'm giving it a coat, two coats of Folk art paint in the color Barely Pink. Now, what she had done was, um, Courtney is her name, <laughs> she had printed out the definition to the word spring. And now hers looks a little different, so you need to check out her video. It's gonna be linked in the description box below. But anyway, she crumpled up the paper like a bunch of times to make it look kind of like, I don't know, linen paper. And so I wanted just that, you know, vintage, that kind of just, old vintage vibe to it. So anyway, I crumpled up mine a bunch and then I'm attaching it to the canvas with some Dollar Tree glue. I'm just using a glue stick that I got from Dollar Tree. And I'm adding it to the back of the paper as well as to the canvas. And then I laid it down and now I'm gonna add some jute twine on the left side and just hot gluing that down. And then I'm gonna wrap it around several times here we go, there we go. Now I'm wrapping it around several times and then I'll hot glue the other end to the back as well. Okay, so now it's time to add the letters on. These are vintage Scrapple letters and I had them in my stash. And so I'm just hot gluing down the letters 
S-P-R-I-N-G to spell out the word spring. A sweet little jute twine bow is gonna finish this piece off. And don't forget, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications so that YouTube can notify you every time I share something new. Y'all, this is how this one turned out. And okay, so in Courtney's version, she put little flowers in the top right corner, which I may go back and do, but in general, I love this. I think it just looks, I love the color pink. I love, I don't know, I just love it all. DIY number three is a whiskey and wit inspiration. I love her channel. I love watching all of her videos. I recreate a lot of her stuff. Anyway, so she made this little bunny topped jar thing and I am just giving this little bunny, even though it's already white, um, I felt it would be better to go ahead and give it a coat of the white Adirondack, Adirondack, Adirondack paint, <laughs> Adirondack, Adirondack, I don't know. Y'all, the struggle is real. I'm giving it a coat of white paint. I'm also going to be painting the glass container that I have in the same color. Um, I don't know why I'm so low on the frame, but you can kind of see what I'm doing. Hopefully, maybe I would, maybe I would scooch down so far so that Captain's tail wouldn't get in the paint. I don't know. I do go back in with that folk art barely pink color, using that folk art barely pink color and kind of adding some pink to the inside of the bunny's ears as well as to the bunny's nose. And then I take a fine tip black paint pen and I carefully go around the eyes. I mean, if I mess up, I can always repaint it with the white color, but I was just trying to kind of barely do it. Next, I'm gonna be adding blue painter's tape to the jar, and I'm using a little piece of tape to kind of as like a spacer. Anyway, I'm just creating stripes. Whiskey and Wit, Whitney over at Whiskey and Wit, created like a buffalo check thing. That was gonna to be too much. I just wanted simple stripes, just pretty little simple stripes and I'm just using that barely pink color to create them. I'm using a combination of E6000 and a and hot glue on the base of this bunny, the bottom of the bunny, basically, because I'm gonna be attaching it to the lid. So I'm just trying to be careful. I don't really want to mix glues. I don't know what would happen. Something probably not great. I don't know, but I'm trying not to mix the glues. Anyway, um, just attaching it firmly to the top. Now comes the extremely messy part. I am adding reindeer moss to the base of the bunny, the top of the lid. It gets, it is so messy and I just, ugh, but, but I think it turns out cute, so. Keep that in mind. All right, y'all. You cannot tell me that this didn't turn out cute because I know it did. I do really like the reindeer moss, even though it's messy. I think it makes like a nice little pop of green on there. And I love the pink and white stripes. I love the jeep twine around it. And I love the little bunny on top. I just think it turned out so cute. Again, I told y'all at the beginning, I love these DIYs and I think you're gonna love them too. DIY number four is our final DIY of today, and it is inspired from Holly Get Hot Humble Pie. Um, she made this little carrot sign, but for my backing, instead of using a backing like she did, I'm using this wire basket from Dollar Tree. I cut it off, and I'm using that, I'm gonna be using that as my background. She had also, and she, I mean Holly, had also done this technique where you make the wire basket look kind of like galvanized metal or like rusted fencing or whatever. Anyway, so I'm, I'm just tr applying different colors, black, brown, I've got some orange in there to replicate rust and um, some silver. Anyway, I'm just blotting that all around. But here's the thing. 
I really love the Try It Tuesday Challenge because it just allows me another opportunity to share about the channels that I love the most. And the, the four channels that I have listed below are ones that I watch like on the regular and I just really get inspired by them. So anyway, I'm just, I love sharing about it. And um, yeah, all I'm doing is just kind of like sponging it on, trying to get that, you know, galvanized look. So fun fact, when I went to glue this on, I glued the side I painted towards the back. So I ended up having to redo that. But anyway, I'm showing you how to adhere this wire to the frame. I'm just using popsicle sticks. I'm using a decent amount of hot glue. Not enough that it's going to ooze out or anything or hopefully doesn't do that. But I'm just using popsicle sticks all around the perimeter of the frame and that's going to help it stay attached. And I do hold it down for a few seconds just to make sure it's staying down and nothing's popping up. I gave the outside of the frame a coat of the Waverly Wax in the color Antique, and then I'm going in and, you know, correcting where I had put the <laughs> painted side to the back, so I'm having to repaint the front, but that's fine. It's fine. It's totally fine. But again, thank you so much to Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs. I'm going to have a link to her channel in the description box below as long, uh, along with the playlist. You guys, I mean, you're going to get so much inspiration if you watch this playlist. So I really encourage you to do so. And I'm going to have a link to all those channels that I mentioned in today's video down there as well. I created a little sign that said rabbits eat free and I uh, just used a jumbo craft stick that I got from Lowe's and I just kind of chop the ends. I kind of try to make look a little rough so that it looks like a weathered sign. When Holly was doing her carrots, she took out the stem that was, that came with the carrots and she added some greenery in its place. And so I have this wired green leafy stuff. I think I got it from Walmart and I'm just putting some hot glue in the center of the carrot where the other greenery was. And then I'm gonna place this greenery down in that same spot. It does look more realistic and I think it looks better overall. And now it's just a matter of gluing it down to the frame. I'm using a wire mat. Holly used a, um, like she had a background to hers. So when I hot glue it down, it's actually seeping through because the wire is, <laughs> you know, it, it, there's, it, the wire is not solid. And so, the glue is sticking to the parts of the wire that it's attached to. I do need to add a little bit more glue in some spots. I go back and do that later, but, um, and it does seep through, but I use a silicone mat and, um, I think I have it linked in my description box below, but I use a silicone mat. So the glue being on my mat doesn't bother me that much because it comes up really easily and doesn't stay attached to my project. And this is how it turned out. I think it turned out super cute. And as you can see, I did glue that hot glue that rabbits eat free sign in the top left corner. I don't know. I just love it. And I love the, the galvanized wire mesh stuff that I have at the back. It just turned out so cute. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love all of today's projects and I hope you enjoyed them too. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos and being a part of my community. I really do appreciate it. And just thank y'all so much for supporting my channel. The likes, the comments, all of that really goes a long way to helping YouTube notice me just a little bit more. And I really, really do appreciate it. And don't forget, if you want to follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. Bye!